Hi everybody, it's Elisa Marie again in the Sweet Life Kitchen and today we're going to make some beautiful carrot, radish, and onion uh, pickles. They're just wonderful. It's one of those things that you can make and you can have in your refrigerator for uh, a condiment. I love to put it on the side with an olive dish, an olive tray, some tapenade. It's beautiful on some bruschetta. Um, it's really nice on top of fish and chicken with some pasta as well. So let's get started. I'm going to show you how to do it. It's really, really easy. So the first thing you want to do is you want to get all of your ingredients together and you're going to make your brine. And so what that entails is two cups of apple cider vinegar. And then you're going to take a tablespoon of red pepper flakes and a little bit of pickling salt, about a teaspoon of pickling salt. And that just takes a step out for you so that those carrots stay crisp once you get them in there and they're soaking up all of that wonderful brine in the refrigerator. You want a tablespoon of mustard seed. You're going to want three cups of water. I like to add one cup of sugar because like my bread and butter pickles that everybody just loves so good with the cucumbers, they really love it whenever I add a little bit of sugar into the carrots. You know, Nana really hated carrots, my grandmother. This is some mustard. This is one tablespoon of mustard. And, um, and I don't remember really having a lot of carrots growing up. We didn't really eat a lot of carrots because Nana was the one that did a lot of cooking and Nana didn't like them. And when Nana didn't like it, we didn't eat it. <laughs> it's kind of like Brian's mama too. There's a lot of vegetables that Brian doesn't eat, but it's because Brian's mama doesn't like them, so we, he didn't grow up eating them. You want to also get a tablespoon of the pickling spices. And you can just pick that up at the grocery store. I'm going to get a little bit more. I like mine to be a little bit spicy. So I'd say one tablespoon and a half of that. And so you're going to get this on the stove and let it simmer. I want you to let that simmer down to where all of the sugar has melted and the salt and all of your powdered stuff, your powdered ginger. Um, have dissolved and everything's just real incorporated. So that's cooking along. And once I get that going, I'm going to turn it down a little bit. And you can let that kind of sit for a little bit while you're working on getting your jar stuffed. So I'm going to turn that down. Meanwhile, what I've done is, as I've always done, taught you guys to do, you want to go ahead and Stick your jars and your lids and your tops, brand new lids and tops, in boiling water and sterilize them. And like my other recipes that we've been going through, a lot of the stuff that I do is for the refrigerator, so it lasts about two months in the refrigerator. If you wanted to with this recipe, you certainly could go ahead and put them in a um, double boiler and sink them down in there and let the water cover the tops of the lids and go ahead and traditionally can them. In that case, when you do it that way, you're going to leave them out on the counter overnight and you're going to hear those tops pop. Once they've popped and they've sealed, then they'll be safe, safe for you to have in your pantry and they'll be shelf stable for about six months or so. But this is, this is one of those recipes that we have in the kitchen and once we eat it, I mean, by the time we get it made and it's you know a couple of dishes in and then the kids figure out I've made it again, then you know by the time we've had a fish or a chicken dish, it's gone. So for me, there's no point in making it unless I've got a ton. And so at this point, I've got just a few things in the garden coming through with the radishes and the, and the carrots. So as the garden gets a little bit more prolific, I may be able to take the time to spend the afternoon and make like six or eight jars for the main pantry. But for right now, this is the way we're going to do it today with the refrigerator. So what you want to do, and like all the other recipes that I've made and showed you how to do it like this, get your vegetables. I have sliced up in the food processor the carrots. I just took these guys and stuck them in there and let them go really, really thin. You can see how thin they are. They're super thin. And then I hand sliced the radishes and then I've got some onions. And so what you want to do is you want to pack your jar. So you put them in there like this. You want to pack them in pretty tight. And you all know how I am about my garlic. So I've always got garlic on hand when I'm making any kind of pickle stuff. So this goes in with it for me. Now if you don't like garlic, by all means, you can admit that. There's no reason to worry about that if you don't like garlic. It's not going to make or break the recipe. But for me, I just like a garlicky uh, uh, pickle. I like garlicky everything. I started to say tomato. I like garlicky everything. So 
for me, it's uh, going to be better for our family if we include those garlic cloves in there. And I just took some cloves, fresh cloves. Everything here is fresh. Nothing's been blanched or cooked. It's all straight from the garden. And we've just sliced them up. And we're just going to pack them in these jars like this. Get as much in as you can. I'm hoping to get... These were two carrots. And guys, they just... They're so big, like it's just crazy. They're able to make one jar. That's what I was thinking, two carrots per jar. So I tried to gauge that pretty well. I did a pretty good job eyeballing that, I think. So once you get this in here like this, I'm going to go back and check on that brine. What other recipes do you think we could make with this? Do you think we could do, like, you know what, maybe even some some um, stew, you know, maybe even on top of uh, some brisket. That might be good too. You know, a lot of times I'll take tomatoes and onions and put a, a roast in the pan. I'll show you how I do that in a different episode, but I'll take a roast and I'll put it in the pan and I'll put all around it vegetables and let that make a sauce and be really, really yummy and the flavors of those vegetables will go into the meat. I'll take the vegetables out and continue to roast them in the oven and let the meat continue to cook at a different temperature. And, um, and it's just a really nice combination of that. But the saltiness and the sweetness of this, it might be really good with ham too as a side. Um, but you can, never, you can never underestimate having a good set of pickles. Like pickles that are in the refrigerator are good for pretty much anything you can think of. Aside for potato salad, aside for your barbecues. Um, it's just a really wonderful thing to have on hand all the time. That's gorgeous, isn't it, guys? Look at that. It's so pretty. So simple. So you're making lasagna, basically. You've got your carrots, you've got your onion, you've got your garlic. And you just keep doing that all the way through until you get it tightly packed in there, just like that. And so I'm going to check on this brine. Everything over here is bubbling up pretty good. Really good. All right, that's cooked down. Nice. All right, so now what we're going to do is I'm going to take a ladle and I'm going to ladle that in over these carrots and radishes and onions. I'm going to make sure that I incorporate in as much of the spices as I can. Because those spices, as that sits in the refrigerator, you're going to want it to sit for about, I'd say, a week, actually, for the carrots. Um, and then after that, you can start to eat them. But the more of those spices that you get in there, the more yummy it is. And look at there, guys. So pretty. So pretty. I'm going to take a little fork and jab that down in there a little bit. Try to, anyway, huh? So I'm going to try to get some of those spices down into the bottom, but I'll shake the jar. Once I get the jar cooled down, I'll shake it. That's right to the tippy, tippy top. And so what you're going to do is you're going to take your top, your lid on there and spin it down like that. It's kind of warm. Let that sit out on the counter until it comes to room temperature, and then you can stick it in the refrigerator. And like I said, in about a week or so, it'll be ready to try. And, you know, you... Once you get it in there, you get a little bit out of there, you can shake it down and some of those spices will go to the bottom. But they're incorporated in there pretty good. It's just a beautiful way of taking care of some extra carrots that you've got in your garden and making sure that you don't waste them and providing the kids with an extra just something to have on the side. Plus, carrots are so good for you. You know, Nana really didn't like them, but growing up, we didn't have them a lot. But now that I'm an adult, my kids just eat them all the time because I love carrots. They're so good for you. So... I hope this has helped you figure out another neat way of doing something with your carrots and your radishes. This is the pickled, uh, the pickled carrots on the sweet side. And um, if you have any other ideas about some uh, recipes that you'd like for me to try with the carrots or even with just radishes by themselves, I'd love to hear about that below in the comments. I hope you're having a sweet day and a sweet life. I'll see you soon.